Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome back for another virtual science camp. Yeah. Uh, this, this one's a really special one where we're joined by Nikita Sidorov uh, from Dubna, Russia, where he's a member of the NICA Collider uh, at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research. And he's also a member of the STAR experiment at the RHIC Collider at the Brookhaven National Lab in the US. Um, so it's really cool that we have someone uh, joining us from one of the world's biggest nuclear research centers. And I'm really excited and honored to have him along for this one. Um, so I'll turn things over to him now. Oh, also a, a couple of things. So um, during his lecture, um, if you have questions that come up, depending if it'll interrupt the flow or not, it might be good to write those in the chat and I'll decide if it's one that seems like it's a short question or a long question. And if it's a longer one, we'll probably wait till the end, till the question and answer period there, uh, just so we don't slow things down too much. Uh, but he is eager to answer your questions. So feel free to ask any up in the chat or get a chance to answer it at the end. Um, so turning things over and thank you again for uh, joining us. This is amazing having you along. Hi guys, my name is Nikita. As Michael said, thank you very much for this uh, possibility to tell you something about the colliders. So I'm going to start with my presentation. So uh, you will not just see my face and that's all. I have some like uh, multimedia um, animations and some explanations to, you know, guys, you to get everything clear. Um, so let's go. Um, so my point was uh, to tell you about colliders. So what is the collider, how it is arranged, and why do we need it? And so what is the collider? Maybe some of you know that this is a huge machine, bird on the ground, and some physicians and engineers work there. But not only, not only them, but I will tell you in, in, in this, about it further. So what is the collider? In uh, Wikipedia, you can see the definition that a collider is a type of particle accelerator which brings two opposing particle beams together such that particles collide. So what does it mean actually? So we have this machine that allows us to make a beams. You know, we, we collect particles, compress them into the beams, and then we collide them. So this is actually uh, reminds me, uh, you know, when we were younger and we were small kids, we were trying to, you know, put something, some stuff, and we tried to break it. Um, our parents were, you know, very upset about it, but we wanted to know how, to, how it's built. What is the inner particles? I don't mean inner parts, screws or some small details. So actually the physicists who are experimental physicists, they are the same as the kids. They want to break something to see what is made of. What are the smaller particles? So this is what a collider machine allows us to do, to take beams of particles, collide them, and see what's inside. So we're gonna quickly find out what particles can we collide and how we can collide them. So let's go to the what particles question. First of all, uh, these are the atoms, these are the protons, and these are the electrons. These are the particles what we want to collide together and to see the inner things. Uh, probably some of you know that uh, previously we thought that atom in the ancient times, that atom is the, the elementary particle. That there is nothing smaller than the atom. Then we found out in 20th century that there, is a pro, there are protons and neutrons inside and also the electrons flying on the orbits. Wow, amazing. But now we want to crash protons and neutrons and other particles to see uh, what is made of. So how can we collide? Uh, how can we accelerate something in our real world? For example, as you see on this uh, animation, if you want to accelerate the ball, you just can kick it or punch it and it will fly. Um, it will move. But what about the elementary particles? There is another physics in this area. So we can't just take, you know, just push uh, a small particle. So what can we do? Uh, you can see a model of nucleus. And if you will take one proton, probably you know is a charge plus charge 
positive uh, charged particle. And if you place this particle inside the uh, electrostatic field, it will move from plus to minus. And so this is uh, how it works. This is a main uh, way to accelerate these particles. Okay, so now we quickly understand that we can accelerate electrons because they are negative charged and protons, they are positively charged. And what about the atom? Uh, probably you know that the atom is a system, is a structure in which we have equal numbers of electrons which are negatively charged and the protons which are positively charged. So if you put the system inside the electrostatic field, it won't go anywhere, like my head doesn't move anywhere. So it stays stable. Uh, but uh, if we will remove some of the electrons from the orbits, we will have uh, not complete atom. So from this system, we will take some electrons and it becomes uh, more positively. So it's positive. So this is also can be accelerated because when we have positive ion, we can control them with the electrostatic field and so on. So let's go to the acceleration point. Um, to collide particles, of course, we can't use this system that you see uh, on the screen because we can't accelerate the particle to very high energy because it just will burn. Uh, so what can we do for the acceleration? For these purposes, we developed so-called linear accelerator. And on these images, you can see the real stuff that we have. Uh, we accelerate particles. Uh, the first line of acceleration always goes through the linear accelerator. And this machine uh, allows us to make acceleration to a high energy, to a quite big energy, but not yet for a collision. So, and this is how it really works. So as you see, uh, we have small tubes inside this linear accelerator and yeah, this is a basic principle how to accelerate particle in the linear accelerator. So each time when particle, positive charged particle comes from the tip, you see to the next step, uh, we switch the polarity. And after that, we have more and more and more and more accelerated particle in. Um, maybe it's not very simple to understand right now. I just make a small comparison. Just imagine that you're kicking the ball and your partners of the team just uh, they keep kicking and kicking and kicking so this is actually how we accelerate the step-by-step -step acceleration of uh, our positive uh, ions or protons or electrons so we're switching the polarity and it goes faster 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 that's it okay so and this is a demonstration of the longest uh, stanford linear accelerator center which is located in the united states and you see how long it is. It's like more than three kilometers and it's a straight line. Uh, but we wanted to collide particles together. So we need to obtain more energy somehow. And, and to collide the two beams, at least we need to build two of these linear colliders, accelerators, sorry. So what can we do now? For these purposes, we invented so-called cyclic accelerator. And you see, and in this animation, uh, there is a running beam in the circle. And in this circle, each time uh, the beam comes through this place, this is a so-called accelerated section. Each time beams passes through, uh, this accelerated section is kicking it with more and more energy. So in this system, you can accelerate uh, the particles as fast as you want. You can gain more and more and more energy as far as you can do. <laughs> so, and the next uh, question, maybe you will ask how it stays inside the circle. So for this, you need to remember the, the right or left hand rule in each country it differs. So each time we accelerate the particle, it goes through the magnet and we increase the field and this, particles of the beams, they stay inside the circle. So this is a dipole magnet, which is used in every accelerator. Okay, uh, but for acceleration, we don't use just one proton, just one particle. We need to do something uh, bigger. So we, we need to collide at least 
many, many particles. So for these purposes, we put so-called beam inside our accelerating section. But uh, imagine what will happen if you will accelerate uh, the beams. You just imagine like you take a sand, for example, in your hand, and then you put it on your, uh, on your leg, you try to kick it. So the sand will go in different ways. The same situation is the, in this accelerating section, uh, which is green. So every time you push the elements, they want to go different ways. So for these purposes, we use the other element of our cyclic accelerator, which is called quadruple lenses. So you can see there's a pairs here, here, and here. So this is what happens if we don't if we don't have the quadruple lenses. It just spread and just go through and you know uh, bumps into the accelerating uh, machine. So for this purpose, we use quadruple lenses, which has magnetic fields in which you have a beam. It goes through. You see in, on the screen, it just bumps squeezes like this size and this size and this size and this size so the beam travels through the accelerating section not even touching the tubes the inner tubes of the accelerator and the third problem here you see that our particles just go you know alone they try also somebody is running fast somebody is too slow but we need to combine them compress them in small and very I would say uh, compressed compressed beam, because during the collision we need if we have like big fat, uh, I don't know even how to say that. <laughs> so we need to combine all two these bunches uh, as far as we can do this and collide them and see. Then then we will see more and more and more interesting things because we, if we will try to collide just one proton with one proton, it will be it's it will be not so interested interesting we need to collide more and more and more particles okay so let's go further uh, so here on this picture you can see uh, the first cyclic uh, accelerator which is called synchrophosatron and it was built in the mid of 20th century and this was a huge machine the weight of its 36,000 tons so it's a quite big magnet but now, of course, we use some other techniques, not such big as it is. And now we go to the collider rings. So we use a dipole magnet to fill the first ring and then the second ring. And in this place, the point of uh, interaction, we will have the collisions. So great job. We build the collider. We know some simple, basic symbols, basic principles that uh, rule the particles, our beams, and we have the collisions. Nice, great job. But this is only a half of the problem because now we need to find out what happened inside. And this is part. This part of the collider is called a detector. It's a very big machine. It is built of many, many, many tiny electronics. Many, it uses magnetic field inside to see after collision if the particles, you have smaller particles. Uh, they try to bend, uh, they bend in the magnetic field if they're positive or they're negative uh, charge. So we can see the picture, how it's, you know, many, many, many different parts. And this, is, this happens inside this uh, detector. The sizes can be different. There is, a, there is a sample of not big one. But here's, for example, the CMS detector, which is located in CERN. <clears throat> you can count that we have one, two, three, four, five floors. So it's a kind of big machine. And as you see, everything is filled with electronics because only with this uh, stuff we can detect, we can find out what particles appeared there after collision and so on. And this is just a sample what we see uh, when we collide, <clears throat> for example, two beams. You see many, many, many particles. This is very horrible <laughs> to understand. And this is only just event which happens uh, every, every time. In, in one second, we have many of them. So it's just one event. 
and you see it's very hard to understand everything from anything from this picture so what do we do uh, we use uh, special programs special algorithms to find out more interesting tracks um, from the collision and we find when we found out we can find out we can see uh, what happened inside what energy we we these particles had and try to identify them so now we know that the collision products we have these uh atoms or po positive ions electrons and protons we smash together them and then we have um, particles such like this you see on the screen um, and this these particles are now uh, included in the standard model so this is basically what you see right now just a small table we don't we didn't discover everything yet but what you see here is just a, the smallest bricks of matter that uh, we know right now for example higgs boson probably some of you heard about this discovery and now we want to fill this uh, table with more and more interesting uh, new uh, particles so these are the elementary particles right now um okay so now let's talk about the research so research is divided usually on two parts we have the scientific research and applied research uh, i will just quickly tell you the difference so scientific research when you want to discover something you want to crash something and see how it is built off and you don't have any other aim to find out what to do with this applied research this is actually a life science so this is the way when you use science to improve your life to make you know some breakthroughs in in electronics for example medicine when you want to improve your life so this is just one for the people who want to discover something and this is to improve our life and and when we talk about the collider it is easy to um, compare it with the microscope actually it's a right now it's a modern electroscope uh, microscope in, in this picture you can see the optical microscope which was invented in the uh, 17th century so imagine how many discoveries we found right after that uh, we found cell we now we know that we are made of cells we have the cell theory and after that in early uh, in 1930 for example we invented electron microscope which helps helps us you know to see viruses uh, we can produce microelectronics. we can investigate smaller smaller parts so we go deeper and deeper um that's a sample of scanning tunneling microscope in 1981 so scientists they even could take on this picture you can see the small blue uh things these are actually the atoms of the xenon so they found out that they can put the atoms together and make you see ibm logo here so and this is the how can we increase this level of increasing okay so what's what about collider so collider you can is the collider you can see deeper and deeper and deeper it's as, as you can see here we have the um you can zoom up to one in minus 15 meters so it's a smaller 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 part so basically it's a uh the modern microscope okay let's now have a small review about the colliders that we have nowadays and i will just quickly uh, tell you about it so since 1961 we built more than 30 colliders already some of them work today six are being built and we will go to the collider types so they are of course they are <clears throat> divided for by the accelerated particles what we use here on the picture you can see on the diagram which is the most this is the biggest part of colliders that we have um, we have these electrons uh, and positrons and on the right side you can see this proton or some other elements 
of course, these are um, positive ions, as we know right now. And the second one is the maximum beam energy. It's the beam energy. It's how fast can you collide the beam inside your uh, collider and luminosity. Luminosity, it means it's, uh, when you collide two beams together and you have this inter uh, intersection point, you can see how many uh, events did you have, how many tracks, how many collisions had, has happened in this place. Okay, so, and this is how the electron positron collider looks like. Um, it's uh, not a very big machine. As you see, it's uh, kind of not so big hole. And as, 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 as you can see on this picture, uh, these are, this is a detector. And if you can see here, there is a man standing. Of course, uh, right now, not, nothing is working because it's dangerous to stay in this area. But anyway, you can see it's not too big. Okay, but we will talk about the serious colliders. Um, as you see uh, on the left side, there, is a, there was a first electron-positron collider which was built in Russia and the radius of this ring is 43 centimeters. And, but now we have a deal uh, with the heavy ion colliders and we can see the radius is four kilometers. So let's, let's find out why. Okay, it depends on the particle. So if you take the electrons and positrons, they weigh not too much um, in compare with the proton because the proton is 1,840 times heavier. Just to uh, keep in mind, you know, I made a small comparison here. So if, imagine if you have one kilogram hammer and on the side you have a van, which weights like this, something like this, closer to two tons. So electron is a hammer and the van is a proton. So imagine how, how big it is. But when we talk about uh, collision of two ions, so now we can compare just to take one proton and take, for example, golden nine, uh, golden nine, and you, if you compare, you will see that you have up to two hundred times. So it's uh, just now you feel the difference. We have the electron, which has his weight, and then we have our heavy ion, which is uh, closer to four hundred thousand times heavier. So this is the reason why we built such big some beach colliders such big such such big colliders sorry <laughs> and right now we have only three machines uh, and these are very big uh, constructions the first one is called relativistic heavy ion collider which was built in the united states in 2000 you see how many money was spent for building this one and how many years of course, there's, it's, a, it's a kind of masterpiece because many people were involved. You see, um, everything was, so it was, you know, um, I don't know how to say, but it's a, a more than just the usual project. It's a mega project. When the, not only one, sometimes not only one country, but many countries, they build this machine they take the smartest people to be involved in this project and, and to find out uh, what we are made of and you know go further and deeper. So the second one is LHC, which is built in CERN. Probably you know this one. And the third one we are building right now in the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research. Um, so probably you will ask, uh, why do we need three colliders? We, on, we already have one the second and the third. So uh, the answer is simple. Uh, each collider is being built for its own purpose. For example, relativistic heavy ion collider uh, was built in 2000 and 2005. They discovered uh, so-called quark gluon plasma. This is a state of matter, which I will tell you a little bit uh, later. So this is a picture of how the collider ring you know, looks on the ground of the relativistic heavy ion collider. So in previous time, we didn't know how to make it one tube, like two channels, you know, put in one tube. 
as we make it in CERN on at Nika Collider. <clears throat> but here you can see we have two tubes. It's a blue ring and the yellow ring. In, in these rings, so these particles, they run um, in different uh, directions. Uh, and this is the point when where the collision happens. This is a star detector, a big machine. Um, on this video, I tried to put my camera inside somehow, but anyway, you won't see anything because it's just filled with electronics, um, many, many wires, tiny processors and something like that. And this is a picture of what we have uh, during the collision of uh, gold ions. And here you also can see the name of the, the number of the run of event, even time. So when we get this information, we try to explore what we found out new, something new in. And, and this is a work at the control room. So we are working here with the guys during the night for seven hours uh, without any break. We control everything. Uh, all the detectors, all the parts, we need to to make everything fine because otherwise we won't get the, this data for our uh, colleagues that uh, will then after uh, will ex ex um, explore, will uh, will see something new in this data. So this is how it works. Okay, let's go to the second collider and this is LHC collider. Um, and this collider, as you probably know, uh, was built to confirm the standard model and to find out this Higgs boson. This is um, this is magical particle, and they did it at the detectors. And now you can see the biggest detector ever that we ever constructed you can see one two three four five six it's about eight floors so imagine how huge machine is this and how expensive because in each small uh, square meter is sealed with tiny electronics to, to see what's going on there and this is a picture how it looks like how the collision looks like of course you can see some rare uh sorted tracks here again not everything that you saw on the previous ones and this is actually the higgs boson but it's not the higgs boson by itself you can see this the tracks of these the long lines particles called muons the short ones these are the uh electrons and when we saw that when we see that uh, from this point uh we, we came two electrons and two muons at the same time, we know that the Higgs boson was in this place. So this is how, how, how can we detect it. Okay, collider number three, um, which is located in Joint Institute for Nuclear Research, uh, in which I'm working right now, which is our city Dubna. And this is a place uh, where we build our accelerator. This one is not too big because um, our accelerator is made for another task. We don't want to collide particles to at very, very high energy. We want to try um, lower energy to find out how the uh, our ions uh, can be smashed and can be melted to a smaller particles to find out the laws, how it, how it happens. How it, this is kind of, uh, Mm, it's this diagram not so simple, so I'm going to skip it. <laughs> um, I will just quickly tell you about the particles, what we want to see uh, to, to get at the Nika Collider right now. So now you know that your nucleus is uh, made of protons and neutrons. And if you'll take one proton, we know right now that the proton can also consist of three quarks and gluons. And we want to know, we want to smash it and to want to investigate each uh, quark and, and gluons, how it works, but we can't just move, move them. We can't just take them out from the proton because when you try to do it, the force becomes stronger and stronger, and this is called confinement. So, but we can make uh, such uh, the, uh, 
okay, during the collision, during the collision, we can make such density and such temperature in which these protons and will be, they will be, they will melt. So they will be released, but for very, very short period of time. Because right, right after that, when we will see this matter in the free state, uh, they again will form uh, triples and again we will see these protons. So, but we want to investigate this area. What rules, how they do it, how do they do this? Uh, this is a, just a quick run through the collider. I will just quickly try to explain you. So this is a source and in, in which we put a small gold needle. We warm this needle to a very, very high temperature. And these atoms of gold comes into the source area. Now we have so-called electron shower, which makes our atom to the uh, positive ion. And it's, now it can be controlled by our fields and we can move it, we can accelerate it. And it goes through the line, linear accelerator and then it goes to the accelerating rings. We have here two accelerating rings. One ring accelerates to the maximum uh, energy that it can. Then it goes to the second ring. And after that, it travels to the collider rings, which are here. We fill these rings and after that we expect uh, the collisions in the MPD detector. So again, you can see the model of it. This is a more or less actual size that we will have at our experiment. You can see there is um, the sizes, it's like 10 meters and seven meters high. And in the center of this detector, we will have the our universe. Okay, so oh, this is my concentrated face. I'm putting the camera just to show you how these um, magnets of the booster ring, how they just, you know, guys are moving there. And we, right now, we already connected the, the first accelerating ring. And you see these guys working, he's plugging everything and inside this tube acceleration will take part you can see these electronics wires inside the camera and this is a second accelerating ring which is right now is ready and we can uh, already made experience in this um, ring and talking about this Project Nika. Also, I mentioned before about the uh, applied research. And of course, we not only want to uh, solve the scientific task, we want to explain, explore how these you know, quarks, how they made these protons, and to maybe find out something more. But of course, we want to use our big machine uh, for the applied research. Uh, this so on the right side, you can see we can we want to try out the creation of new materials, medical beams, and I will show you the next animation will be about the medical beam and radiobiology. We want to investigate how radiation uh, involves to the living organisms, and even the disposal of radioactive waste. Just imagine if you just can take some radioactive waste, which needs uh, many years for decay. But when you put inside this uh, our flying accelerated beam, it just uh, collides with this radiative waste and this waste becomes just two simple elements. So we don't have to waste like wait for many years until this you know decay process will finish. This is also a very interesting uh, idea. Okay, and I will just quickly run through the, the uh, medical applied research so we also plan to investigate the influence of the uh, charge beams to the you know some people have um, unsurgical tumors so some surgeons just can't make operations inside because sometimes tumors can be um, inside the human body 
but in this case we use uh, radiation and we use proton therapy or other ones in which we can uh, put the accelerated beam to the tumor inside and you know to, to try to destroy it and in this method for example of proton therapy we uh, use so-called break peak uh, in which protons then when they, they go through the live tissues they don't destroy anything but when they slow down they burn the bad uh, bad tumor or bad parts of the organism so it's very interesting and the space movies space movies um, you know there are many movies in which uh, some team they are flying somewhere you know for many years sleeping and then they wake up and do some interesting uh, movie but uh, right now i must say that the, these uh, space flights are impossible because we feel even make a ship and go out there uh, i don't mean that our space station but you know to, to go the in, into the space uh, during the flight like in one or two years uh, the tiny electronics of the ship will be damaged and especially the human organism will be damaged also so all these movies about how they were flying to another planet or so on so they are well, for right now they're impossible because they have been already dead like in one or two years so why I am telling this? <laughs> because uh, we don't, we have uh, having this acceler accelerator is such as Nika, um, we can uh, test new materials for the ship shells, which we can use for the ships. Um, and uh, because we, we won't have to wait, you know, testing like for four years in the, in the space, we have much radiation here on our accelerator which can test the ship shells and, you know, to build this one and maybe sometimes we can travel in space. Okay, this is my last slide and just um, invite you to, to go our educational project. Uh, it's, uh, as you see, the URL is edu, gnrru, uh, and on, in this educational portal you can find out some interesting resources for example nika universe in the lab i rec recommend this one to you um we it's a not a big movie like 45 minutes or, or less in which we explain how the universe was created what are the particles and you know how we want to investigate it it's not actually too heavy so you just please join also maybe you can find other inter interesting resources for you there such as virtual gnr which allows you for example put your um, vr glasses if you have and go inside gnr so this is this is it thank you very much for your attention i hope this lecture was interesting for you thank you That's, that's been really awesome. Thank you very much. I hope so. This actually was an experimental one. I usually uh, explain this one, you know, in universities, but I didn't have the experience like doing this online. So thank you. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's been really great. And like, like we said at the beginning, uh, we'll take a couple minutes if people have questions. I know there's a, a variety of different levels people have going into this. Um, so don't worry if you have a simple or more complex question. Um, it'd be great to hear from some of you. And just while you're taking a moment to think of questions, I want to second what he said about their education resources. They have some really great stuff on their website, so it's uh, it's worth checking it, uh, checking it out. Uh, I, I know I've liked it a lot and used it with some of my classes. So some of you who I've taught before um, outside of the virtual science camps might have seen some of it. And it's, it's worth having a look at. Um, okay, and there's some questions in the chat. Also feel free to uh, use the microphone to, to ask questions if you want to be one to say it, or I'll mention some of the ones from the chat if people don't seem to want to say things. Um, and if, if you want to signal that you want to say, either use like the hand up feature or um, give like a thumbs up with the reaction. 
So some of the questions we've had so far, I'll read them out. Um, one is asking about CERN collaboration with Russia. I know there are a lot of things going on, but maybe you know better than I do to, to answer that. Yeah, of course, of course. So as far as we have the accelerator there, um, you see in our Joint Institute for Nuclear Research, which is the um, not actually a Russian organization, it is uh, international. We have 24 participating countries and uh, such institutes also not only CERN, but many of them in the United States. We actually, I call it, we don't, we don't have borders because for example, in our uh, Joint Institute, we have uh, departments, many departments, which are involved in experiments in CERN. For example, as for me, uh, I work at GNR, but my department is also involved in the NICA project. And at the same time, I'm involved in the project in the United States, the other collider. So we are mixed in every time. And of course, we share knowledge. We got to do this because otherwise, you know, how can you imagine uh, the science just in one country? It, it, it will be too slow and so we of course we every time we collaborate together I have friends at CERN I have friends in the United States and we are ready glad to see everyone here also and 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 on that note I think your t-shirt has the same thing in the back of mine says so I'm just going to turn around backwards because this is a t-shirt that I got uh, from the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research I can't see backwards see if it um, shows it oh, well yeah, yeah 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 this one yeah 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 i also and, have this one on my back and, and so when i when i was given uh this by the the director of your university institute at gnr i quickly became one of my favorite t-shirts and there's probably a lot of people who know me personally here who, who've seen me wearing this one because i think that's mm -hmm. uh that's a great saying and like a great slogan to have for uh for a project yeah and and I see some hands up for questions. I'll, I'll call on uh, people who want to use their mic for now. And if there are ones people haven't asked on the mic, I'll go back to ones written in the chat afterwards. Um, so let's go ahead and call on Johan. Uh, you have a question? Yes, I do have a question. First of all, it was an amazing presentation. And I was curious about the NICA complex. Is it going to be a medical center? Because I, I understood that they're going to use that raise to uh, help tumor, I believe. So uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, you see, um, we make a collider, and we want to solve, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, the scientific task. Of course. So firstly, it's a physical experiment. But when we build this one, uh, we can make some other some uh, uh, applied research experiments. So it's not it won't be a medical center but we will try to make some improvements in this area we, we will we will um, invite some guys who are actually half uh, medicians and half uh, physicists and to uh, to see because we have a new instrument and we can try we can try to um, to accelerate not only protons but many maybe some other elements and to see how these elements they 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 influence of these tumors or, or whatever so this is like one of the experiments uh, which will be i think will be realized in the at the nickel collider and and in case it's of interest uh, to anyone to, to hear as well, at JNR they have uh, a whole laboratory de dedicated to biological effects of uh, nuclear physics. So they're doing lots of research there as well, right? Yes, yes, of course. Actually, our institute is very big. We have seven laboratories. If I will start to tell you about every lab, it will take like 10 hours. <laughs> But I work in, in my labor, laboratory is uh, in which we uh, collide particles. For example, the second lab, uh, they are um, they are making new super heavy elements. So they are not colliding. They have smaller energy and they combining them. So they fill uh, periodic table. I think everybody knows this one. And the last elements were also synthesized at our joint institute. So we have neutron reactor here. We have laboratory of uh, neutron reactions, neutron problems, some different. Uh, even we have the uh, 
new, um, a neutrino microscope, which is uh, based on the Lake Baikal. So we have many different interesting physical experiments here. It's, it's, it's mind blowing all the stuff that's going on there. It, it really is an amazing place. Uh, and did, did, I, did I cut Johan off with a second question or was it just the one question? Okay, just the one qu question. Are there, uh, are there other people who want to ask a question using their microphone before I get to the couple of ones waiting in the chat? And I don't see anyone there. So getting to some of the ones in the chat, there was a great one from Lilu who's asking about uh, the particles compressed into beams inside the collider. Um, so she mentions, you mentioned it, but that wasn't fully understood. I think that was about the quadrupoles. Yeah, so the thing is when we imagine a tube of the collider and these particles just flying, they will, will fly randomly. They will try to bump into the, you know, in the surface of the tube. So, to, and, um, and if we will do experiment like this, we just won't see anything in, in the point of intersection. So it just, it can be compared, for example, if you take a snow, if you will see how the snow falls and, um, and when you, for example, make you know, a snowball. So our task is to make a snowball and make two snowballs and collide them. How we compress them, Again, they are positively charged or negatively, for example. We use the magnets, which uh, uh, compresses them. It's because when you, the charging particle goes through the uh, field, it will be, we will change the behavior. Um, it can be changed also in duple magnets when it bends, when, because when it goes in, it just goes like this way. And when you have, quadruple lens you just can quickly google about it and you will see that we still put the pair of these uh, magnets and then when this uh, this bunch goes in it just squeeze like this one and then like this one so in the accelerator it always um uh, we call it the gymnastics of the beam so he, he must be, every time this beam should be pushed Otherwise, it just go, you know, in other, in different directions, and that's all. So I hope I answered your question. And if if it's not if it's still not clear, feel free to ask another question for more detail on that. And there was a there's a question from uh, uh, about radioactive waste. So if we can get more detail on radioactive waste disposal, how how that works? Because I think you mentioned one of the things about Nika was uh, radioactive waste. Right? Yeah, it's also one, one of our, again, experimental programs. So it's um, experiment, which is goes to applied research. And uh, also we want to make experiment when, you know, collider works every time, but sometimes from time to time, you can give a small beam in a special channel for this experiment. And in this experiment, we want to put uh, just imagine, for example, plutonium or something like that, radiative waste. Um, if it stays uh, by itself, the decay time take very long period of time. So, for example, you know this uh, disaster that happened in Chernobyl or Fukushima, for example. So what they did right now, what they do right now, they, they, they covered everything, just at least, you know, this uh, radiation to not come out. So the, the first task just to cover and wait. So that's all. We can't do anything else. But if we will take, for example, this, this, and this waste and put the, in the accelerator, just imagine you have like a small, uh, a big uh, snowball. And then you, uh, with this, our accelerator, you just, uh, you know, just throw this at the very, very high speed this snowball into the big one in and, and this one like you know, sp uh, sp spreads like the two parts and these parts might be for example something that uh, some elements uh, that you know that are in the periodic table and they are stable i don't know for example a spherum or uh, or any iron so you just can divide on two parts which are not radiative at one time, just bump in the divide. I, I hope <laughs> I hope this helps. 
Excellent. And I'm, I'm not seeing any more questions. If anyone has any remaining questions, uh, mention those right away. Otherwise, we'll, we'll wrap up. And oh, there's one more. Uh, okay, about the beam making process. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned particles flying at different speeds. How do you compress them in the direction of the beam? So I, like, I think that's like when you were showing evaporating the, the gold needle. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it'll be in a gas when, when it's down there and you're stripping the electrons off. And uh, Lilu, who asked the question, if I'm getting this wrong, feel free to correct me. I'm, like I'm trying to word what I think you're trying to say here. Um, but if they're going at different speeds, then how do you get them all accelerated into a coherent beam? Mm. So we accelerate them step <clears throat> by step. Um, I don't know. So firstly, we have this linear accelerator, and after going out from this one, we have a certain speed. Then we have like first ring and the second ring, and after the second ring, we divide we divide these uh, particles into one ring, let it be left, and into the right ring, and they are moving there at the same speed. Uh, it, it can be controlled by the electronics, by the magnets. Of course, we, we, also, we always detect and see the picture because in this point of collision, we need to, them to have the both uh, the same speed. But if you are asking about uh, maybe, maybe that was a question, how they applying them, maybe they, how, why they do not collide. So for these purposes, we have, um, so after the acceleration, we switch on special channels from which they are coming for the collision. So we can do also this, this thing. So just not just only two rings with the point of intersection. These are full two rings, but sometimes we can switch and change a little bit the trajectory and you know collide them in the point. I, I hope this one. Perfect. And yeah, Lino has said that uh, that answers the question well. Uh, in the meantime, there's another question. Um, Johnny was mentioning uh, a project at CERN called Beamline for Schools, where uh, schools, like a, a class led by a teacher, can propose a project where they get um, something, like they get beam time uh, for one of the beams on the LHC to study something that they've proposed. Uh, and he's asking if there's anything similar at GINR or um, like a more general version of that, what kind of um, educational programs do you guys have? Oh, we well, I guess that's a really big it. question. <laughs> we do have, but to help you out with this one, uh, maybe I can just uh, put the URL in the chat. So we have um, our, our entry point to GNR, we have, of our special department, which is called University Center, uh, in which it's a UC GNRRU. I, I, oh, I, I don't know. Can you see this one? Because it's from me to Johnny Jones privately. Maybe, ah, sorry, I, I know right now. I just didn't use chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone in meeting. Okay, this one. So it's UC GNRRU. It's a university center if you want to find out something interesting about the excursions or how to visit or maybe participate in some summer practice. We have, we, we also do them. We have special uh, labs for the guys who are coming. And so you also can participate. We are open for this one. And, and I know in, in my experience being in, co in contact with you and with people at the university center, uh, everyone's been extremely welcoming and uh, really helpful trying to set up what could work for us. Or um, So like I'd recommend anyone, especially teachers on this, uh, it, it's worth reaching out to them because they're, they're wonderful and very, uh, very accommodating in my experience. And I, I think that wraps it up for questions. And with all the questions, we, we have ended up staying uh, for a while. So I'll probably uh, wrap things up. And, and thank you again for joining us. So this has been a great opportunity. It's been amazing for me, and I'm sure for, most, uh, for all of the participants as well. So thank you again for uh, joining us for this special lecture. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I saw thank your thank you. yous. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh,
and have Thank a good have, have a good evening everyone and i hope to see you at more uh, virtual science camps so uh, stay Thank home you. stay safe and stay curious goodbye everyone thank you thank, thank you. you bye